Hello there. Uh, this is the material that I was going to cover in lecture for you. And what we're going to do is talk about using Excel to do basic matrix algebra. Some of you have had uh, matrix algebra before linear algebra. Some of you have not. The only thing that we're going to be doing in this class, though, is addition and subtraction, talking about what a vector is and what a matrix is, what a scalar is, and multiplication and inverses and transposes. So let's take a look at the homework assignment with the data for that. We'll share the screen for that. Here we go. So here's the data from our particular little study. And in order to use this data to make a variance covariance matrix and a correlation matrix, we're going to be multiplying by either of two things, a row of ones, which looks like this. It has as many columns in it as we have observations in the data set. Or a column of ones, which has one column and as many rows as we have people. So in order to do matrix algebra, it's important to orient a little bit to Excel. Downstairs here, we're navigating back and forth with our spreadsheet elements. And up here in the upper left-hand corner, where I'm moving the cursor over, is the formula cell. So whenever I want to enter a formula, I need to go in there and put in something there. So using the handout, let's make the sum of the three variables. Well, there's going to be three variables in our study, so I'm going to have three columns. And now I'm going to type the equal sign, and you'll notice upstairs here, I've got this little equal sign going on. And in order to matrix multiply, I'm going to type in M M U L T, open parenthesis, and then I'm going to say what two matrices I want to multiply. Well, the first matrix I want to multiply is my column, my row of ones, comma, and now the data that I have. And I'm navigating left and right with the arrow keys here close parenthesis, and then here's the only thing that's tricky. Very frequently, if you're used to playing with Excel, you just hit the return bar at this point. In order to do matrix algebra, we have to be a little tricky. Hold down the Control key and the Shift key, and then hit Enter. And now you'll see that we have the sums of the variables. So this 50 is the sum of 829 through 064. And this 100 is the sum of these variables. To calculate the means, I'm going to take the sums and divide by the sample size, which is 10. I can copy that and paste that in. And that will tell me that the means of these three variables, 5, 10, and 15, respectively. Well, in order to make a deviation score matrix, I can't just take this matrix and subtract off this row because those matrices aren't the same size. So I need to blow this column, this row up, so that I have as many rows in it as I have in my data set. And in order to do that, my column of ones is now going to come into play. So I've come down here for a place to put my column mean matrix. It's going to have as many columns as I have variables in the study and as many rows as I have people in the study. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And again, I'm going to multiply equals M M U L T, open parenthesis, and then coming up here, here's my column of ones, comma, and then I have to go up and grab my means, holding down the shift key and selecting these guys close parenthesis, and now again, control, shift, enter. You'll see down here, haha, now my 5, 10, and 15 have been replicated as many times as I have in the data set. So to create the deviation score matrix, I'm going to take the data that I have minus its respective means. I'm using the arrow key to zoom to these things. And that will give me the observed score minus the mean. And because this is Excel, I can copy that and come down here to 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 
and paste it. Four, three, eight, eight. Let's see, do I have 10 rows? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Yep, I do. So what I'm going to need to do is now to make a transpose of this deviation square matrix. Move that up there for that purpose. So the transpose operator is just going to take the matrix that I have here and put it on its side. So to do that, I'll come up to transpose part, go down as many rows as I have columns of the matrix, and as many columns as I have rows, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, two, nine, equals transpose of, and then come over here and pick the matrix that I want to have to do the transposing. Close, prevent, control, shift, enter. So if you've had an analysis of variance class, maybe you'll remember that they talked a little bit about something called the sum of squares and cross products matrix. So this is what we're going to do as a first step toward getting a variance covariance matrix. So in order to calculate a sum of squares and cross products matrix, I'm going to multiply the transpose by the data. That's going to give me a three row by three column matrix. <clears throat> right, so let's highlight our three rows and three columns we want to end up with and do our multiplication. Equals MMULT, open parenthesis, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, comma, and here's my original matrix, two, three, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Close parenthesis, control, shift, enter. So what is this thing? Well, this is going to be what sits on the diagonal are the sums of the deviation squares. So it's 3.29 squared, 0.57 squared, 55 squared, and so forth, all added up. Same song, second verse for the 90, that's going to be this column. And for the 160, it's going to be 9.15 squared, so minus 61 squared, and so forth. And these things over here are going to be the cross products. This number times this number, plus this number times this number, plus this number times this number, all added up. That'll give me 30. Same song, second verse, like down here. That's going to be 50 times 915, plus 34 times minus 61 and so forth. To change this sum of squares and cross products matrix into a variance covariance matrix, now I'm going to, just like I did for the sum, going to divide by the sample size. So that would be 40 divided by 10. And I can copy that and paste it down here. And now I've got a variance covariance matrix. So as we talked about in class, this thing is what sits on the diagonal are the variances of the variable, and what sits on the off diagonal are the covariances. And a covariance matrix, you can kind of think of as looking a little like a correlation matrix. A positive number indicates a positive association, a zero indicates no association, and a negative indicates a negative association. It's just that you're not going to see correlations here. You'll see expressions of covariation expressed in the metric of the variables that are involved, specifically the standard deviations of the variables. But we can talk about that later. So if we want to get to from, a cover, from this deviation score matrix or a variance covariance matrix into a correlation matrix, there's two ways to do it. The way talked about in the extended discussion in the handout is by taking our deviation score matrix and now turning that into z scores. That is, this is x minus the mean. And if you'll remember your formula for a z score, that's x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Well, I've got the variances right here. So I can come into here and say, I want to take the first row, first variable's number, and divide it by the square root, that's QRT, of my little number four that I got over here. 
close parenthesis and hit return. So this tells me that the z-score for the first observation on the first variable is 1.65. Now, if you're playing around with Excel, you can put a dollar sign in before that cell entry in this formula, and that will tell Excel, when you copy and replace this, don't shift the row around when I copy and replace. So now I can take this, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and paste it in. Okay, and I can do the same thing for the second one. This is going to be is equal to this number divided by the square root of nine. Okay. And in similar form, I can come in and I can put in a dollar sign up here and paste that in. And similarly for the last one, I can come up to this matrix divided by the square root of this. Dollar sign in there, copy it, and paste it down here. Well, you'll notice there's a pattern here. We're going to make our correlation matrix. We're going to have to multiply first by the transpose. So let's make a transpose. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 is equal to transpose of. My standardized square matrix, close parenthesis, control shift, enter. And just as before with the deviation square matrix, I'm going to multiply by the transpose. And then multiply my original variables. Those parentheses, control, shift, enter. So this just as before is the square of this number added to the square of this number added to the square of that number. Hmm, they're all tens, isn't that interesting? And similarly, this is going to be the sum of the squared cross products at five. In order to take this number and change it into a correlation matrix, I'm going to take the number and again divide by the sample size. Okay. And there you have it. Now, it's possible, if you'd like, to calculate a variance covariance matrix from a deviation score matrix. I can pre and post multiply by one over the standard deviation, <clears throat> and that would give me. Uh, the correlation matrix as well. It's just you know straightforward and it's covered in the handout. Okay, let's stop this and come back now and do the onyx part. So inside of onyx, let's minimize this. And bring this up. So I'm assuming that you're seeing Onyx. Now, this is not a program. I mean, it's a free program. It isn't designed for those of us with disabilities. Way up here in the left-hand corner, there's the word Onyx. And I can left-click on that, and I can load modular data. And the data set that I have for you, and it comes up, is going to be the mccardle.txt data set. It's been a while since I've accessed it, so maybe it takes a while to swap into memory.
Okay, there we are. So here's mcarnold.txt. And you'll notice I've got the variables in here. I can come down here and I can mouse over them and it will show me some descriptive statistics for the variables that I have. And if I want to do a regression, I'm going to be drawing a diagram. And we'll be covering what these diagrams mean. But for the moment, I just want you to be able to mess around with Onyx. So if we come up to Onyx and say, make an empty model, it will give me a little space to draw my picture on. Now, the first task is to make a regression predicting time two from time one WISC scores. This is a sample of African-American children in North Carolina. So I highlight the two of them by clicking left on them and holding the shift button down that lets me get more than one variable. And I drag that over there and ta-da, here's my two variables. So as it stands, you'll notice that I've got a double-headed arrow here and a double-headed arrow here. I am by default dealing with the deviation score versions of the data. That is, things are not standardized and I don't have the mean in the model. We'll get to that in the next part of the handout. To make this into a regression, I'm going to come over here to time one and left click and drag over to time two. And then I need to tell Onyx this thing is a free parameter. So I left click again and I see this menu and I click free the parameter. And then I see, ta-da, I now see the number that represents the unstandardized regression weight. You'll notice this number down here changed. That's because this number now represents the error variance. Now, in regression, you are most often probably used to seeing standardized coefficients. In order to see the standardized coefficients, I left click again on the regression and I come down here and I pick show a standardized estimate. Ta -da. Over here, I can click show a standardized estimate too. And that's going to show me the proportion of variance in this variable not accounted for by the predictors. Now, as we talk about in the handout, these standardized estimates are nothing more than the coefficients that you would get if you were to standardize these variables, that is, deal with the standardized score matrix. And you can do this inside of Onyx. I can, again, right-click on the variable and come down here and say, apply a Z-transform. And do the same thing over with time one, apply a Z-transform. Now you'll notice, hey, those unstandardized and standardized coefficients are the same things, and the error variance is the standardized error variance. So that's a little reassuring. I can also remove that Z transform and go back to how things were before. All right, let's do a two predictor model. And that's interesting because it will have variances and covariances in the picture. So let's come up here again and left click and create a new empty model. Come down here, I can cover this other one up. And now I want to have variables one, two, and three. So I hold down the shift key and click the left button, and that highlights all these three, and I can drag them all over. You can drag them over one at a time if you like. I'm just lazy. Ask my children and my wife. So I can left click and move these little boxes around. <clears throat> and I can, just like before, draw some regression weights here. And I can free these parameters like this, like this. And then I can say to the program, I want to have a covariance in my model. I want to allow for the fact that my predictors are correlated. So to do that, I come up here to my first variable. And now instead of just dragging, I'm going to hold the shift button down and drag. And ta-da, there's a double-headed arrow. And I can, just as before, free this parameter. So now what this diagram is saying is the variance of this variable is 40, the variance of that variable is 52, and the covariance between the two of them is 37. These are the unstandardized regression weights. Just as before, I can come in and show the standardized estimates for both of these. And I can even express this in terms of the correlation coefficient. Okay. I got the 81 that I had before, that's kind of reassuring. And as before, I can come down here and show this standardized estimate. 
and this 0.24 is 1 minus the r squared for the model. And when we cover two predictor regressions, we'll go into the guts of that. That basically is all we need to do. If you have any questions, let me know.